In this lesson, we are going to discuss trigonometric functions of acute angles. We will be discussing the following exercises. First, let us recall right triangles. Suppose that I have my angle theta here. The side adjacent to theta is this side. The side opposite your theta is side B. And the hypotenuse is the side which is opposite your 90 degree angle. The six ratios of the lengths of the sides of a right triangle are called trigonometric functions and they are defined as follows. As a mnemonic, we have our SOKATOA. SO means sine of theta is its opposite over hypotenuse. CA means cosine of theta is its adjacent over hypotenuse. TOA means tangent of theta is its opposite over adjacent. These are the three basic trigonometric functions. This remaining three over here are just the reciprocal of this three. So that's why it is very important that you have to memorize Sokotoa by heart. Notice that cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine of theta. The secant of an angle is the reciprocal of cosine. And the cotangent is just the reciprocal of the tangent. For example, let us find the value of each of the six trigonometric functions of this angle theta. We have a right triangle here. The adjacent side of theta is 3. This is the hypotenuse 5. And what would be the opposite side? Since this is a right triangle, we can use our Pythagorean theorem. So we have 3 squared plus, let's call that B. This is equal to... 5 squared. Upon solving for b, we get 5 squared minus 3 squared, and this is equal to 16. So therefore, b is equal to 4. So now we are ready to get all the trigonometric function values. The sine of theta is its opposite over hypotenuse let me just write so opposite over hypotenuse so that's four fifths cosine of theta is ka so adjacent over hypotenuse so that's three fifths tangent of theta it's toa opposite over adjacent so it's four over 3. And for the rest, they are just the reciprocals of this. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So this is 5 fourths. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. So that's 5 thirds. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. My way to memorize the reciprocal is that if it starts with S, its reciprocal should start with C for sine and cosine. Alright, so this is C. This one here, its reciprocal is S. For tangent, it's very easy to memorize that its reciprocal is cotangent. Here are the reciprocal and quotient identities. Again, let us recall what is the meaning of identities. It means that the equation is true for any value of your variable. This means that... These equations are true regardless of the value of theta. I have mentioned earlier that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, the reciprocal of secant is cosine, and the reciprocal of cotangent is tangent. For the quotient identities, we have two. Tangent of theta is the quotient sine theta over cosine theta. Why is that? Sine theta over cosine theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, whereas cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. But when we simplify this complex fraction, hypotenuse gets cancelled out, so we're left with opposite over adjacent, and that is precisely your tangent of theta. 
this identity is true because cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent of theta. So the reciprocal of sine theta over cosine theta is cosine theta over sine theta. Here is another set of identities, Pythagorean identity. Again, from Pythagorean theorem, we know that e squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. If I divide both sides by c squared, I get that a squared over c squared plus b squared over c squared is equal to 1. Or I can also write that as the square of a over c plus the square of b over c squared. What is a over c? Take note that a over c, this is adjacent over hypotenuse. a over c is cosine of theta and then you square plus what is b over c? b over c is opposite over hypotenuse so that's sine of theta and this is equal to 1. We just write this as cosine squared theta and this as sine squared theta. This is our first Pythagorean identity. Let me just copy it here. If I divide both sides by cosine squared theta, I get cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta is 1. Sine squared theta over cosine squared theta, what is that? That is tangent, correct? Tangent squared of theta. What is 1 over cosine squared theta? 1 over cosine is secant of theta. So therefore, this is secant squared of theta. That is our second Pythagorean identity. And again, starting from our first Pythagorean identity, if I divide both sides by sine squared of theta, what do we get? Cosine squared theta over sine squared theta is cotangent squared theta plus sine squared theta over sine squared theta is 1. 1 over sine squared theta is, what is the reciprocal of sine? It's equal to cosecant. So we have cosecant squared theta. This is our third Pythagorean identity. These three groups of identities, the reciprocal identities, quotient identities, and Pythagorean identities are also known as your fundamental identity. So it's very important that you memorize this. So that you will memorize this, tangent squared theta, I wrote it this way. Tangent squared theta plus 1 is secant squared theta. And then if it's cotangent squared, its partner is cosecant squared theta. Just in case you forgot this, you can always derive that from the first Pythagorean identity, either by dividing both sides by sine squared theta or by cosine squared theta, just like what we did over here. Let us now find the exact value of each expression. Notice here that all of the angles are the same. They're all equal to 20. You don't really have to know what tangent of 20 is. But notice that we can use the fundamental identities here. What is sine of 20 over cosine of 20? This is just your theta, right? Sine theta over cosine theta because they are the same. That is tangent of 20 as well. So therefore, this is equal to 0. What about this one? Sine squared pi over 12. Well, you don't have to know what that is. For the second term, we have 1 over secant squared pi over 12. What is that? What is the reciprocal of secant? The reciprocal of secant is cosine. So therefore, this is cosine squared of pi over 12. Do not forget to always copy the angle. I do not want to see something like this. Alright, that doesn't make sense at all. You have to write what the angle is. These are just the same angle. So what is that? Sine squared of whatever that angle is plus cosine squared. You have the same angle. This is equal to 1. We were able to get 
the value of the expression from using our fundamental identities. Here's another example. We're given that sine of theta equals one-third and theta is an acute angle. Let us find the exact value of each of the remaining five trigonometric functions. The first thing that you have to do here is draw a right triangle because it says here that theta is an acute angle. Let us suppose this is my theta and we have sine theta is equal to one third. What is sine theta? It's opposite over hypotenuse. So without loss of generality, I will take the opposite to be equal to one. This is the opposite and the hypotenuse to be equal to three. And therefore, we will now use our Pythagorean theorem to complete this right triangle. So let's just call it A for adjacent. So we have a squared plus 1 squared equals 3 squared. So we get that A squared is 9 minus 1. So therefore, A is square root of 8 or 2 square root of 2. I will just delete that and I will just write it as 2 square root of 2. So now we are ready to get all our values. We just need cosine theta. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent theta is towa. Opposite over adjacent. So 1 over 2 square root of 2. When you rationalize, we get square root of 2 over 4. And then the reciprocals. We have cosecant of theta. What is this? This is the reciprocal of sine theta. So that's 3. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So we get 3 over 2 square root of 2. And lastly, cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent. So I will just use this. The reciprocal of this one. So that's... 2 square root of 2. So here is a summary of the steps that we did. First, you have to draw a right triangle and then assign values on two of the sides based on the value of the given trigonometric function. And then find the length of the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. And then you're now ready to get the value of each of the remaining trigonometric functions using the definition. Here's another example. Tangent theta is equal to 1 half and theta is again another acute angle. Let us find the remaining trigonometric functions. Step 1, draw a right triangle. And then we will assign values for the two sides. Tangent theta is 1 half but tangent is opposite over adjacent. Let this be my theta. So we will take opposite to be 1 and adjacent to be 2. To get the third side, we will use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's call that H for hypotenuse. 1 squared plus 2 squared equals H squared. So H is square root of 5. And therefore, we have sine theta cosine theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I'll just leave my answer in that form. I will no longer rationalize it. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. 2 over square root of 5. And the reciprocals. What is the reciprocal of sine? That's cosecant of theta. The reciprocal of cosine is secant of theta. So this is square root of 5. This is square root of 5 over 2. And for the cotangent of theta, that's just the reciprocal of tangent. So this is equal to 2. It's also important to use the complementary angle theorem. First, let us recall what complementary angles are. 
two angles are said to be complementary whenever their sum is equal to 90. If you look at the two acute angles in your right triangle, since this is already 90, that means that these two angles must be complementary. They must add up to 90 also. So this one should be 90 minus theta. Now, if I compute for cosine of theta, it's adjacent. Cosine is ka. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's a over c. Let us compute for sine of 90 degrees minus theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite of 90 minus theta is A. Then its hypotenuse is also C. As we have seen here, cosine of theta is equal to sine of 90 minus theta. This is our first identity. What if we compute for sine of theta? Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, B over C. And cosine of 90 minus theta is, for 90 minus theta, its adjacent is B also, correct? So this is also B over C. So therefore, we have that sine theta is equal to cosine of 90 minus theta. And this is our second identity. Cosine and sine are said to be co-functions. The complementary angle theorem states that co-functions of complementary angles are equal. So for example here, what are the co-functions? The co-function of tangent is cotangent and the co-function of secant is cosecant. So for example, let us use the complementary angle theorem for this one. If we use the complementary angle theorem, what's the co-function of sine? That is cosine and then what angle will we put here? The complement of 62. So therefore, this is cosine of 28 degrees. What about for tangent? What is the co-function of tangent? The co-function is cotangent. And then what angle do we write here? Since this is in radians, 90 degrees in radians is pi over 2 minus, and then I write here, pi over 12. So this is cotangent of, I will write this as 6 pi over 12 minus pi over 12. So therefore, this is cotangent of 5 pi over 12. For the third one, cofunction of cosine is sine. And then here, pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees minus pi over 4. And this is equal to sine of pi over 4 also. Because the complement of pi over 4 is pi over 4 as well. For the last example, cosecant. The cofunction of cosecant is secant. Then pi over 2 minus the angle pi over 3. So this is secant of LCD of 6. We get secant of pi over 6.